joined us this evening. This is our last Wednesday night worship together with Bethel and Bold. We are so happy the first two weeks went so well, and unfortunately we're not able to be in person for the last three weeks. We hope that we can do this again in person next year. In terms of other announcements, please simply watch your emails and all of the information you get from your church about Palm Sunday and Holy Week and Easter Sunday worship. We will continue to do all our ministry as we are able together in love. We begin with our opening. The Christ candle has already been lit. Behold, now is the acceptable time. Now, now is, is the, the day, day of, of salvation. salvation. Turn us again, O God of salvation, that the light of your face may shine on us. The light of Christ be with you also, always. And also, also with you. Let's pass that light to one another. John, and we're going to read through the part of the fourth chapter. I just want to say that 1 John is a letter from, or it's really a sermon from a pastor to a congregation. So uh, this is a message for us who are involved in the church, um, for those of us who are uh, looking to God for comfort and consolation. So, receive this word from 1 John. My dear friends, we must love each other. Love comes from God, and when we love each other, it shows that we have been given new life. We are now God's children, and we know God. God is love, and anyone who doesn't love others has never known God. God showed love for us 
in sending the only Son into the world to give us life. Real love is not our love for God, but God's love for us. God sent the Son to be to be. God sent the Son to be the sacrifice by which our sins are forgiven. My dear friends, since God loved us this much, we must love each other. Now, no one has ever seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and God's love is truly in our hearts. God has given us God's own spirit. That is how we know we are one with God, just as God is one with us. God sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. We saw this Son and now are telling others about Jesus. God stays with God stays with everyone who openly proclaims that Jesus is the Son of God. That is how we stay one with God. Because we have experienced and trusted the love that God has for us, we are sure that God loves us. God is love. As we stay with God's love, God, God's love stays as one with us. Living in God's love as Christ did in this world, we will not worry about the day of judgment. For God's complete love replaces any fear we have of God. The thought of punishment from God is what makes us afraid. If we are afraid of God, then we have not experienced God's complete love. We love because God loved us first. But if we say we love God and we do not love one another, we are liars. We cannot see God, so how can we love God if we can't even love those we can see? This is the commandment that God has given to us. Love God and love each other. Here ends the reading. My friends, here's the promise we get today from this lesson from 1 John. God's love is complete. In God, fear is overwhelmed by love. So dwell in God's love. Place your trust in God's love. It does not disappoint. Amen. That's my introduction. So now let's get into it. <laughs> the here and in, there are so many promises in this little section of the of scripture that um, I my point or my theme is is this tonight. In the midst of our pain and loss, God's love will hold us and sustain us. In the midst of our unknowns, God's love will hold us and sustain us. <laughs> 
in the midst of our fears, God's love will hold us and sustain us. As Pastor Brenda said, by way of welcoming words and introduction, this is the last week of our Lenten worship services. We started our journey of Lent at the end of February, which feels like six years ago rather than six weeks ago, because life now is very, very different than the first week when we gathered here at Bethel for soup and worship. So I want to take a couple of minutes and review the other teachings that we've learned from Lent 2020 for a couple of reasons. One is that we have experienced so much change in such a short amount of time, it is very easy to forget what we've learned in the last five weeks. other reason is that the lessons from these previous weeks really help create our theme of perfect love casts out fear. That theme is drawn from today's lesson, which those exact words aren't included in the CEV translation, the Contemporary English Version translation, but the idea of God's love overwhelming and casting out our fears is, is built as we studied and learned from these promises of love that come to us in the New Testament. So our first week together was back on March 4th, and our theme that night was Love Does No Wrong to a Neighbor. Our text was from the Romans chapter 13. And in theory, we would say this idea that love does no wrong to a neighbor. In theory, this should be easy, especially at this point in time, because we have uh, good transportation systems, or we have food that grows pretty much everywhere around the world. There are so many places where people can live and work and thrive on our planet. And yet, we find that at the southern border of the United States, and in many other situations in the world, but in particular for us, at the southern border of our country, there are families experiencing harm done to them. In the horrific situations that Pastor Brenda described, we find that our country is harming our neighbors. And although God calls us to do no harm to our neighbors, often in this world, neighbors are being hurt, they are entrapped, put into cages, they are enslaved, stolen from their families, they are ignored, their problems aren't addressed, people are shamed, so they feel wrong about being who they are. People are pushed aside. And so, at this time of the world, people still are experiencing harm. Our neighbors continue to be hurt. And yet, in Christ, we find love that does no wrong to neighbors. And in truth, in Christ we find love that endures those wrongs that are done. In Christ we find 
one who endures with us. He suffers that violence and hatred and neglect and the wrongs that are being done. So in that first week of our Lenten worship together, we talked about this, how in Christ we find love that is more powerful than wrong. We find love that is able to overcome death and violence and hatred. And in fact, in Christ, we find hope. So that was back on March 4th, which again, it feels like a lot longer ago than that. We gathered in rooms 9 and 10 here at Bethel, and we enjoyed a meal together, and we were pleasantly surprised to find that we were very crowded in that room. So the next week on March 11th, we gathered in the sanctuary at Bethel, and we talked about the question of who will separate us from the love of Christ Another lesson from the book of Romans, uh, the 8th chapter. And we reflected on, on this question, and really the response to it is the promise that nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Not one thing can separate us from the love of God. The promise is that always God's love is shown to us in Christ Jesus. That love is present, always. Always God's love is more powerful than our fears. God's love is more powerful than our present situations or our past experiences. Always, God's love is more expansive than the powers of this world, than the depths of our despair, or the extent of our fears. As we grasp for God, God's love is there. We may doubt, and yet, even in our doubts, God's love is ready and waiting for us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God shown to us in Christ Jesus. That was back on March 11th, the second week of Lent. And in between this promise that nothing can separate us from the love of God, into the third week of Lent, which was the challenge that Jesus gives us to love our enemies, a whole new reality set in for us. In that one week, Many, many, many in-person activities were canceled, including our gathering here. March 18th was our Wednesday night worship, and that time we shifted from an in-person worship experience to an online format. We all embarked on a whole lot of change at a very fast rate. And for some of us, that kind of experience of change, that is our enemy. For others of us, there are a whole lot of unknowns. We are not sure even now what the next month, two months, what those think time frames are gonna look like. That sense of unknown, some of us feels like an enemy 
so we reflected on what it means to love our enemies. Because Jesus calls us to love our enemies, so we have to take a, make practices of acknowledging that maybe we don't agree with our enemies, maybe we don't understand them, but our enemies need to be respected. We also are called to recognize that our enemies, no matter what form they take, they're part of our life here on earth. And as we begin to have some of this recognition and acknowledgement of our enemies, we also are challenged to understand that love takes many forms. And that we are called to use God's love for goodness and kindness and care. And that includes loving our enemies. Not an easy call. So then last week we gathered again in this online experience and we reflected on uh, Jesus' teaching just before he is about to die. And he's teaching his disciples, and he says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And how are we able to do that? As Pastor Brenda was teaching, even though we're keeping our social distance, we are learning to trust the Holy Spirit in new ways to keep us close in faith. We reflected that the Holy Spirit does indeed help us in our lives and guide us along the way so that we can love God and love our neighbors. We were reminded in a new way, I think, that we are not alone in our journey to love God and to love our neighbors, but instead we are dependent on the Holy Spirit to walk with us, to teach us, to guide us, to console us, and to remind us of God's commands. Which are to love God and love our neighbors. And so that now brings us to today, our fifth week, and yet we've had, we've had even more changes in how we're uh, doing worship and how we're connecting online. And so at home, we're experiencing this new stay-at-home order from the state. It's going more and more and more places. The numbers of people who are sick, very sick, the numbers of people who are dying are increasing every day. And we are approaching the last days of Lent in 2020. And here in this little letter of First John, we encounter another promise from Jesus. is that God's perfect love casts out fear. So what is this love that can cast out fear? I've been wrestling with that question because it, it feels like kind of one of those really lovely ideas, but it's hard to, like, what does it mean? So I'm um, we're all sort of searching, wondering this, but some of the things we know that this means. Love that casts out fear is the promise that you are enough. You do not have to prove that you are worth something 
God created you. God knows your value. God knows you are irreplaceable. Love that casts out fear is the promise that you are accepted. You are a child of God. God loves you. You are accepted. God accepts you, that means you can accept others just as they are. Just as they are. Love that casts out fear is the promise that you are held in God's good, kind, and trustworthy hands. You do not need to fear God, because God is love. And nothing can separate us or our neighbors from that love. The last one I came up with is that love that casts out fear is the promise that even though fear is present, that's not the end of the story. And so, yeah, at this time in life, we are living in the midst of a lot of fears. There's a lot of unknowns. But that is not the whole story, not at all. God's complete love, God's perfect love, casts out fear. Now this doesn't mean that hard things won't happen. It doesn't mean that for those of us who love God will magically be protected from tragedy or illness or the death of loved ones. It means that when we trust in God's love, more than we trust in our fears, God's love will keep showing through our lives and in our actions. So, as we go from this journey of Lent, 2020 into Palm Sunday and then into Holy Week, we do so knowing that God's love is more powerful than our fears. Yes, we still have unknowns and grief and loss and troubles, but God's love is bigger than that. So as the realities of our new normal continue to set in and life continues to change, remember that in the midst of our pain and loss, God's love will hold us and sustain us. In the midst of our unknowns, God's love will hold and sustain us. In the midst of our fears, God's love will hold us and sustain us. So for these things, these promises, and for our Lenten journey together, we give thanks to God.
Friends, we would continue with the prayers. If we were together, you would be voicing and signing those prayers as you wish. We will assume you are doing such from your home as Pastor Michelle lights candles in honor of those prayers. Lord, for the prayers we have spoken aloud, signed in our home, and left unsaid, we trust in you, Lord, in your love, that you will love us forever and always. Amen. We'll continue with the Lord's Prayer. together okay let's do it okay are you, you in you, yeah i think am i in we don't know yeah, we're oh, gonna we'll, know. we're gonna do it so you start the lord blesses you and keeps you the lord's face shines on you 
and gives you peace and grace and mercy. The Lord looks upon you with favor and gives you peace. Amen.